Hey, what's up everybody? My name is John Ferry and welcome to New Zealand Tattoo. Today, I had the great pleasure of talking to Andy Swarbrick, who's a color realism specialist and bases himself in Christchurch, New Zealand. It was a really cool conversation for me today to learn about Andy's journey in tattooing. He's really well known, not only for his color tattooing, but also his oil painting. And you'll hear that he does a lot of oil painting still, but also he does a 5 a.m. wake up quick paint session every day. Please make sure you go and follow Andy on Instagram under at LHPAndy. And if you like this conversation, please do subscribe to the channel, like the video, and look out for all the conversations that are coming up. Hey, Hi, Matt, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. How you doing? Yeah, good. How you doing, bro? Good, bro. Good. Thank you so much for doing this, man. Uh, no worries, dude. I'll just suss my fucking speakers out. Nice. There we go. Some goldfish happening at the back there. Oh, always, always goldfish, bro. Yeah, it's cool, man. I saw those ones you were doing in the um. I don't know if you what would you call them like not larvae. Mm. Are they larvae? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that latest one, yeah, they're all like um, they sort of look like um, yeah, fish larvae, or they could be like frog larvae. I haven't decided. What <laughs> Look at this crazy fucking sunset. It's fucking insane. Lovely, eh? Yeah, yeah. We've got um, pretty pink skies at the moment. It's nice. Yeah. How's the family, man? Yeah, good. You know, that dead life, y'all. Enjoying it? Um, yeah, no, it's good. It's it's real good, eh? It's a real, um, it's a real motivation to grow up. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, but, yeah, like so many decisions are just like, well, I have to, I just have to do this now. Yeah. Like, you, can't, you, you just don't, you can't go, oh, I don't feel like it today. It's like, well, you, you, have, you, you just have to. Like, it you know, literally doesn't leave you. Yeah. 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 How are the um how are the early mornings going? Yeah, all right. Eh? I'm still getting up at five every day. Is so. that still by choice or is he waking you up? Yeah, bro. Yeah, no, no. I wake up at five. No, it's yeah. it's not it was never him waking up at five. It was he he would usually he would usually be getting up at like seven, I guess. Sure. Um, but I was getting up at five because like I I I watched a couple of YouTube videos and listened to some um, podcasts and I was just like, right, okay, maybe I can do something else. So and yeah, the amount of times I've listened to yeah. something like whether it be a podcast or YouTube or something. And it said to me, don't do exactly what you're doing on your phone for like mm. first thing in the morning, you know, um, yeah. actually sit there and enjoy coffee or yeah, do what you're doing and be yeah, productive. Cool, man. Yeah. Like I yeah, really appreciate you taking the time and especially if this is your, um, normally your YouTube or your watch some Netflix or something time. Cool, no, man. it's all good, man. Like it's it's one of those things I'm sort of learning with with um with new fatherhood uh, or relearning it all again. Um, is it's you just make time, man. You know, just make time, make time for other people. That's the one. Yeah, no, I, I do appreciate it, man. Um, there's quite a few things that I'm really keen to talk to you, especially about um today, if if it's cool. But um, first and foremost, I'm really keen to hear about like young. Andy, like, how did you find yourself in tattooing? Um, geez, you, you've been okay. at it for a while now, right? Yeah, man. Like, oh, I've got this tendency to be like, oh yeah, I've like, I've only been in this a few years and blah blah blah. And then I, I did the calculations the other day, and yeah, twenty twenty one. I started my apprenticeship in October two thousand four. So it's been like 17 yes. years now. <laughs> so, so like good. this whole subconscious thing of like, I'm still a new artist and I'm still learning. Like I still learn. I still have that mentality. I still have that yeah. sort of drive to learn and grow. Um, but this um, self-image of still needing to learn in order to be good at what I do is kind of, it's not real, you know, like I've, yeah. I kind of do know what I'm doing and it's, it's hard to admit that, <laughs> but yeah, it's so like 17 years now, man. Like, That's epic, like, man. Crazy. So how, how did it all start, man? Obviously like as a, as a young guy, you, you grew up in Christchurch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my family's from North Canterbury. 
my earliest memories are from like we lived next to Burwood Forest, um, <clears throat> which is quite a ritzy place now. Yeah. Waterkiri Drive. Um, back then, my dad worked in this sawmill. So I grew up next to like a big pine plantation. Me and my brother just used to spend. We were allowed out there until it got dark. So that was really wow. late in the, yeah, in right. the summer. But like these big forts and threw shit at one another. And then we moved <laughs> to um, Aranui and mum and dad bought a house. And that was a bit of a bit of a rough neighborhood with a bad reputation. But I really liked it there. Yeah. You know, made a lot of friends. and. But yeah, no, I um, spent a lot of time in hospital, in and out of hospital as a kid. I was born with some um, disabilities um, yep. and like a lot of operations and stuff. And that's where I sort of, I always drew for fun and I always got praise for it from like mum and dad. So cool. I wanted to draw more, you know, yep. to do that stuff. But that's where I really was forced to like spend a lot of time on it. Like, um, you know, back then, fucking, geez, I'm old now, eh? Like, so in the kids ward in 94, when I was in there, there was one, two TVs in the whole ward and they'd yeah. view them into your room, right? So the majority of the time, there's nothing. There's yeah. no radio. No one had a smartphone. Like, it was fucking, mum brought me comic books. That was it. And cool. my pen and paper. So yeah. I used to just copy like 2000 AD magazine. So that was like um, Judge Dredd and, and Slain and ABC Warriors, stuff like that. Yeah. Fucking giant robots killing people, man. Like how oh, much fun is that? To do? So, I mean, you're still yeah, doing, doing it, right? Like, I'm pretty sure I saw a Dredd not long ago in your, um, in your quick painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I actually got a hold of one of the artists I used to copy. That painting that I did, the quick painting in the morning, um, was from that artist and i tagged him in it and cool. he was the first to comment on it so the guy that i used to copy that got me into painting seriously wow. actually commented on my shit and it blew my fucking mind oh so good it's crazy yeah so um yeah absolutely nuts but anyway long story short like go through high school failed art um the whole time um the, the sort of one art teacher was really nice but he wasn't my teacher when it came up to like school c and all the qualifications and stuff yeah. The art teacher I had then, she um, she really didn't think anything other than, that's not art, it's no good, get out of my fucking class. So, yeah, I got fired from my job um, making cable because I was drawing on the back of the um, quality control forms instead of, well, I was filling them out, but I was drawing more than I was filling them out. So uh, I was actually drawing to try to put a portfolio together to go to uni to do my um, arts degree um, because I didn't know of any pathway to convert being good at drawing and painting to a career. Like, So, yeah, it was um, – so that's what I thought the pathway was to maybe getting an art career was doing something like that. So I got fired and then I um, had a bit of a break um, with all my money I got for being fired um all my holiday pay and stuff and then with the last of my money before i started my next job in a sheepskin tannery i went to get a tattoo and i forgot the drawing for the tattoo so i said to the guy um do you have a pen and he's like yeah and i drew a ballpoint pen anyway from work they're really good at just doing it right the first time i just drew this fucking angel thing i wanted on my arm yeah. and he's like oh you're an artist. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, do you draw a lot? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, do you have a portfolio? Yep. And he goes, right, I'll book you in for tomorrow, bring your portfolio in. I'm like, okay. Oh. So, so I did that and my portfolio was, you know, 200 pages thick of, of drawings. Um, and I don't know, you've been in the industry a wee while. It's um, reasonably unusual when someone comes wanting a job that they've actually got a decent portfolio. Well, it was back then anyway. The majority of people that were asking for never uh, anymore and stuff like that back yeah. then, the two, three, a four sheets of shit they'd drawn that day. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so he was like, "Holy shit!" You know, like going through it, and then he got about halfway through, and he started sort of talking about how to be a what was expected of a tattoo apprentice in his eyes. And um, I was like, "Oh, you're offering me a job?" And he goes, "Oh, well, I'm offering you the opportunity to maybe." get a job and I'm like yep. oh, okay oh well I'll have to think about it so I'll get the tattoo and then I'll think about it 
Yeah. Man, like my experience of tattoos then was I had one uncle that had like a super old tattoo. My mum had like a little cartoon dragon on. Like as far as I knew, because I didn't know any better, the tattooists just copied other people's stuff, like cartoon yeah. stuff. That was it. So I was like, fuck, is that what I want to do? Yeah. And um, it was one of my flatmates actually convinced me to, to give it a go. And um, it was like, well, you're going to do four years for a degree. It's going to cost you, you know, 15 grand to do a degree. And then at the end of it, it I'm going to have to work the whole time as well. Yeah. And then at the end of that four degrees, I'll have a piece of paper that says I can draw. And he goes, well, if you start doing tattooing and don't do your degree, you're going to stop painting. And then at the end of that, you'll have four years worth of drawing and painting and credit. I'm like, okay, cool. So I worked evening shift at the Sheep Centenary. And then I would go and open the shop that I'd get there at like eight in the morning. Like once he trusted me enough, I got a key. Get there at eight in the morning, mop floors and scrub fucking tubes and rearrange the books in alphabetical order and that yeah, sort of yeah. shit. What you <laughs> <laughs> when you um when you took that portfolio in a couple hundred pages, what were the drawings? Were they were they mm. things that you'd you'd kind of come out come out of your mind? Were you just copying from comics still and and um Yeah. It was all mine. It was all mine, and it was all it was Amazing. all black or blue ballpoint pen. Cool. Um, and I had I'm self taught, so I had worked my way through a book called um, Dynamic Anatomy by Bern yeah. Hogarth um, when I was seventeen. I bought that from a comic book store, and then when I was working in that factory, I got another book by him called Got Dynamic Light and Shade. So what I did is I basically worked my way through that book, like trying different light sources and stuff, just all the book oh. and So Yeah, so it was all that, all just everything, man. Like I drew, fuck, I had a whole page of just spheres. I just yep. drew spheres of with light from different angles. And then I was yeah, like, cool. it was just in black. And I was like, fuck, there's got to be a way to show that a sphere is made out of chrome or wood or stone without putting shitty cracks through it or something. Yeah, sure. So I was just just real boring shit like that. But I was trying to build up a portfolio of stuff that showed that I had this knowledge and skill so that yeah. if I went to university I could be like, check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that was that was my plan. I, I had no idea what to do. So I was like, I'll just get good. <laughs> That's epic, man. So good. So how mm. long were you um how long did you apprentice and then how long were you with that studio? It was weird. It was weird. It was like, um, it wasn't a, there was no sort of structure to the, um, to the apprenticeship. And I never really knew when it finished. Like, yeah, there was a point where he was talking to other people and he's like, was sort of mentioned that I passed my apprenticeship, but we never really had that conversation. So yeah, yeah. I, guess it was, I guess it was around two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. During those two years, I was left in charge of the shop. You know, I'm iron for twice for six wow. months. At a Epic. So, yeah, it was crazy. He handed me a book. Um, oh, what was it called? Reinventing the Tattoo by Guy Atchison. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and he just, he Epic. just handed me that book and he said, read that, read yeah. all of that, and then I'll start teaching you other stuff. So that's that's what I did. So Epic. Yeah, I've, I've, seen, um, I've seen that book, but I've also seen that he's um, – guys just brought out a, a whole series of conversations with people with the same name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got to do a bit of draw, uh, bit of drawing and painting over cool. lockdown. Um, Hocko um, asked me to, to do it with them. So, we, yeah, I got to, luckily had some time to do some sessions. That guy, yeah, yeah he's sensational. Back in the day, bro, mm. like, fuck me, like, the, 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 the type of stuff that was around then and was popular, the level he was at, was yep. so far above like it's it's hard to imagine now how far ahead he was of the curve yeah because we're so connected and we see like these people develop these new styles like live on um instagram every day or anything like that but yep. fuck me like you'd, you'd get the latest tattoo magazine out the next month and there'd be a new guy at Jensen back piece and you'd be like what the actual Fuck, like, crazy, yeah. You know, the only big tattoos I've ever seen were Western, Western takes on Japanese tattoos. Where yeah, everything was coloured in, you know, everything. Green leaves and <laughs> yeah. water, and just, yeah. Like, like cool, like skilled stuff, but real, 
like you wouldn't you'd never tell you like that now yeah at, at what stage did you start finding the the groove that you kind of the the realism the color the mm. you know that the, what obviously your portfolio now is ridiculous it's amazing some of the stuff you're working on that i've just seen the last couple of days is just mind-blowing but back then there must have been a time that you did something you're like oh there's something there that i can work on there's some yeah. tips that i could start bringing out and yeah, yeah the, first, the first couple of years of tattoo and i was actually looking at doing new school stuff that was sure. um, I'm in the hot rods and you know i grew up in the back of a hot rod and stuff so i was like fuck yeah i'll do that yeah. thing to flying eyeballs and shit you know, yeah fat outlines and but I'm hopeless at line work. Like, fuck me, man. Like, you could put a gun to my head and tell me to pull a straight line and you'd shoot me. Like, it's just, <laughs> I just, I put in so much effort in like writing or line work, like, fuck off. You know, like, it's just horrendous stuff. And I watch people like Tamako artists and stuff like that just smashing these huge fucking perfect curves. I'm like, ugh. Like, I have to um, give a, I have like I have to give a shout out to Lance Lance Hadfield man he he spoke your praises today just um for being such oh, a wow. such a nice dude obviously the art as well but just being such a nice but you look at his like lines it's just oh, so crisp I've, I've judged some of his work before at shows and it's yeah. like it's, oh, you know like it's in a good way you know but it's yeah. like fuck me like it's just like or Tommy Tommy Clark you know you see him. I see him working his fucking hands doing this and the line's perfect. Perfect, yeah. You know, like, always the way, eh? Yeah, always the way. Yeah, yeah. My hand's perfect and the line's like... Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the client. It's not you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But with the... Back to your question, like, with, the, with that, like, I saw... I hadn't seen much in the way of realism or anything. I think my first exposure to that sort of stuff was, um, like, Paul Booth. Yep. Um doing this weird demon stuff and it wasn't realism but it was getting there it was yeah. pushing in that direction especially back then and it was him and um the first real stuff that i would have considered realism that i really saw was um oh, joshua carlton okay back in the day so he 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 still does he's still he's still around smashing smashing and awesome work but he did he had this technique where he'd just do like black, like hard out black portraits, and then he would wash color in. So into the into the um, sort of mid tones and highlights, and it's yeah. not quite where realistic color tattooing got to, but it yeah. was definitely like he was definitely smashed down some barriers. Yeah, you know? um, and then um, I did a I did this. We had this piercer in the shop and he sort of let me just fuck and tattoo him. And then I decided that him and one of my flatmates and I was, I was doing black and gray on him. It wasn't, it wasn't my best work that I was good at, but it was, it was easier to figure this stuff out um, just using black and gray. And, and then I just started finding excuses to do this stuff. I would charge clients the same amount that it would have cost to do a normal cartoony tattoo rose and I'd be like, how about I put some realistic shading in this? And they'd be like, oh, how much is that? And I'd be like, I'll just fucking do it. And you're like, all yeah. right. So that's where I cut my teeth in realism. And then I started getting more of that work because I started getting known for doing more of that work. So I guess my realism journey started with flowers, just doing realistic flowers on people, you know? And um and then it sort of just went from the air. And then I started realizing that I didn't have to. Well, we, there was a culture in that studio, which is the studio, like Left Hand Path, it's my studio now. But there's a culture in that studio where you drew everything. So even if someone wanted a portrait, like they would, we would be told to draw them and then use that as the stencil. Yeah, which, got, yeah. Is, which is wrong. <laughs> it's incorrect. But, we, but at the time, man, we were figuring it out. Like yeah. There was no we weren't, there was no one else doing it. We didn't know how to fucking do it, so we we're figuring it out. But what it did is it got my skill level up, but it also meant that the majority of work I was doing, I was drawing. Yes. So um, it meant that when it came time to develop my own style, I was used to it. I wasn't 
I wasn't taking other people's work and photoshopping them together. That came later when yep. when I saw other people doing that. I'm like, oh, you're you're allowed to do that. Yeah. Because I always thought there was this weird unwritten rule that you weren't exactly. allowed to fucking trace anything yeah. if you were serious about what you were doing. And then and then I saw people doing it really well. And it's like, oh, it's not cheating. It's not stealing. It's yeah. like you're doing a portrait of this guy. Of course, you'd use that pit. Why would you draw another one? Like, it just never occurred to me. That I was like, but yeah, that's where that came from. And then I was just like, I really like a lot of like painters that do crazy shit. And I was just like, fuck, I reckon I could do that as a tattoo. Sure. And then seeing stuff from like um, Jeff Gogway. Yeah. But yeah, Jeff Gogway as well. I've got a bunch of his art yeah, on my walls, be. man. He's he's just unbelievable. Yeah, man. Like fucking, we saw his work in Tattoo Magazine or something like that. And it was all tigers, like realistic tigers and bamboo. Mm. And fuck me, I was like, oh, okay. And he did some like Vargas type stuff, like that sort of 1920s um, like Art Deco type girls as sleeves. Yep. And I was like, fuck, that's insane. And, yeah. You know, I, um, yeah. Yeah. And it was all, and then it was all just, it sounds so wanky, but it was, it was just trial and error. And, and I taught myself, I taught myself how to do it. You know, like I saw, by the time I saw Nico Hurtado's um, DVD on color realism, he was doing it totally different to how I did it. Was that the day of the dead one? I doing it like that. And it just didn't work for me. So I went back to doing the way I do it. Yeah, yeah, cool. And through this whole period of like that discovery and trying to figure it all out, were you paint? Are you like, are you always painting as well? Um, I used to paint in acrylic paints, and then it was the Holger gave me a set of like real cheap set of oil paints that I've never tried before. So I wasn't painting wasn't a big big part of it, um, because so much of my time was taken up with drawing. Like we drew. Every tattoo, you know, from Celtic crosses, everything. Yeah, yeah. Do it by hand. Um, so a lot of my time was taken up with that, but there was a there was a lot of artwork in the background that was that was being done. Um, just a lot of like portraits and like I used to paint like Warhammer scenes and shit like <laughs> that. You know, just just fun things that would never I would never in a million years thought could be tattooed. <clears throat> and when painting really came into it, like I really started pushing into my painting started really enjoying that. It was like a it was like a serendipitous moment where Nick Squires had come over from um Aussie and we were competing in this ink off um at the Sins show in Christchurch and we both were doing colour portraits at the same time. Um and he was doing phenomenal he still does phenomenal work um at the time but he was the guy in Aussie that was yeah. doing what I did. And I was the guy that the organizer from of the Sins show knew did that over here. So she just like fucking smashing, you know. <laughs> but he mentioned that he was going him and um, oh God. Claire Reed were going to a painting workshop at Jeff Gogolay's studio in Oregon. And I am when's that? And this was like fuck, I think it was October. And they were like, oh, it's in January or, or June or something. I don't know. <clears throat> I was like, is this space is left and they're like I don't know so I, 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 I messaged them you know, and, I, I mentioned, and I mentioned that like I wanted to come over with Nick and that and they were like look there's no spots left but since you're coming with them like we'll open one up for you I'm like yeah, so yeah I, I went over there I, I fucking saved my money and, and went over there and did the did the course with Jeff and then fucking that, that was me like he just showed us a technique of of painting that simplified everything and made it easy to get what was in my head on the on the canvas and that's all that's just been made since then like the technique I use now is still very similar to what he taught us I've got my own sort of way of going about certain things yeah um but it's basically it's basically what he taught us there and I, I went back at almost every year for a few years to paint with him amazing yeah. pilgrimage yeah, man. Well, I was just like, fuck, like if I want to look like it's a chance to learn from somebody who knows what they're doing and, and there was no... And yeah. You couldn't go and do a course at uni on it. You couldn't go mm -hmm. and do any of that shit. So I was like, fuck it. Like if I want to invest in my own future. Even I'll if you weren't it. able to paint there, just to go and be around them and um, and experience, especially yeah, artists that, 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 you know, that, of that caliber, 
Um, oh, the people in the room were yeah. fucking, the other people in the room, I was like, am I supposed to be here? You yeah. know, like, it was, it was fucking nuts. And like, but it was like, it was a lot of money, you know, it was a lot of money when you include flights and accommodation and everything, you know. Yeah. And I wasn't charging then what I'm charging now. So yeah. it was a, a lot harder. And, um, but I was like, you know what, fuck it. Like, and then it, it showed, like, I came back and, and I sort of, after that, I sort of, I guess I became known for that over here in the Aussie. And, and well, wherever I went, really. But I, th- I think that's where my career sort of went after that. I was known for doing that style of painting. And then, then I guess after that, was known for doing that style of tattooing. And like I started yeah, wow. going, I could fucking tattoo that. And I did. And then it healed. And I was surprised. As yeah. surprised as anyone. I was like, fuck, okay, cool. I'm like, there. <laughs> do that now, you know? like, but yeah, I was, I, was a bit, I was a bit ignorant of that for a while. Like what? I the same thing. Like even now, I I keep thinking I'm still upskilling before I can finally do what I want and that sort of. And then you know, people ask me for interviews or or shout me out and stuff like that. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I'm kind of known for doing that stuff. Hey. <laughs> well, I mean, like that's the whole point of um of the series of conversations that I want to have, man. That, that these like yourself and whoever else I'm kind of um asking to take um time out of their days to talk to me they, you're, you're all people i admire like from afar obviously and and via Thank social you. media but the the art and not to blow smoke up anyone's butt but w- when when you think maybe it's a tall poppy type scenario but when you think about new zealand and uh, unless you're actually looking at tattoos daily online and, and watching people you wouldn't really know much about what's actually being produced here and uh, when you spend some time you just go fucking hell they're just sensational yeah it's, i think there is a real there's a real issue with all poppy syndrome over here 100 um, some of the yeah. things that i really admired about the states when i went over there um and i went over there with a very cynical mind about what i thought about the states but what i really appreciated over there is people would enjoy when somebody else did good genuinely like over here when you're like someone's doing good you kind of take the piss yeah even if you mean it you know, like, or, or self-deprecating, like somebody yeah. goes, oh, wow, that's really good. And you go, oh, nah, uh, fucking, you know, I've seen better. Or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just some little like, stuff. Off one of those yeah. things where it's like, you've got to learn how to take a compliment or learn, learn to, you know, so fucking good at what I do. Yeah, I'm proud of that. And yeah, uh, yeah. You know, the thing that. is that you'd get it from your clients all the time, but you wouldn't pay any attention to it because you've just spent however many hours kind of putting it in. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, cool. You're just stoked because you got a fresh tattoo and it's kind of what you mm. thought. But when you hear it from, you know, anywhere else, you go, oh, okay, yeah, thanks, I guess. Uh, still learning. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, um, yeah, but no, there's, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of amazing shit, you know, like New Zealand punches above it, well above its weight in the industry. He does, yeah. Um, compared to, you know, the populations and the, the pool of artists that other other countries have. Fuck, we've got some we've got some good boys over here, man, and girls, you know, like smashing it on the world stage. You know, we have some of the art coming out of this place is, you know, and yep. we're the envy of other places, you know. We, are, we, we, really, we really are. You know, Absolutely, so man. Other tattooists want to come here for yeah. many reasons, you know, like it's, one of the places you want to go as a tattooist, you want to go to Japan, you want to go to New Zealand, you want to go to Samoa, you, know, you want to go to these places that are where tattooing is happening. You know? Yeah. Mm. And, and it has such a deep, deep heritage. Mm. I think that helps as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask with um, Left Hand Path, how, how long were you at the studio before you kind of decided to shift it where you are now? Um, so I worked for Holger for six years 2004 and i left just before the earthquakes okay the second earthquake in between the second and first and then i worked i just be spotted for a while and then i found out that um i was going to open a just a private studio on my own and then um i found out that he was selling the left-hand path and well or he was going to shut it down really and then he offered to he offered to um, sell it to me so i bought it and uh, took on all the apprentices and stuff and then we were in, we were in so that was 2011 into 2011 beginning of 2012 and we were in Addington from then until the beginning of last year 
Yeah. Oh, well, oh yes. It's, it was super, super recent, the move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, yeah, we closed the studio down in December. Went to Japan for our honeymoon and we're yeah. going to open back up out here in February and then COVID. So nice. Uh, lucky for us, um, it meant we had no overheads being out here. Yep. So it was a slow And time start. to set up, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, man, if I had still had that studio in town, I would have been bankrupt. You know, there was there would be zero ways that I could have afforded to keep the doors open. Yeah. Had we still had that studio. So I really feel for a lot of people of what's happened. But I really enjoyed working with other people. I love I loved working with other artists, man, and I loved um I love teaching apprentices you know i love teaching people artwork and what and, and trying to help them flourish on their own you know i want to the the ultimate goal of teaching an apprentice is to have them go away and be successful not to milk them for everything they're worth you know expect that they owe you something they owe you nothing but they they paid you by doing all the shit you had to, to do to be an apprentice you know um but yeah and to come out here it was um yeah, I just really want to concentrate on my art. I really want to do good work. I really want to do um, crazy shit. And it's a good way to edit out people. You know, they don't want to drive an hour out of town to yeah. get travel on band. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. You're Easy working on some that. big stuff, yeah? Like I've seen that, that big back piece that you're just starting to post up and you've got that guy that's just covered in like demons. and Yeah, man, it's like fucking, it's hard because I like, I really want to learn how to play the game. You know, I really want to learn how to play that Instagram game and and stuff and and I think I think it would be a massive mistake to lament that that's how the industry is now. Look, fucking tattoo magazines aren't a thing anymore. You know, like that's you have to you have to be this way, and it, it does really suck that the 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 work of tattooing has been molded by this medium. So there's a there's a propensity now to need to do these tattoos in one go so that you can get that good photo or that good film to get it on fucking Instagram because unless you do that, what happens is like what's happening to me is I've got a lot of big projects on the go. I just can't show anything because the new bit looks awesome in a photo, but the stuff that's fresh that maybe a month old isn't, you know, all that your fresh colors are beautiful, you know, like it doesn't look the same. So you've got to wait until it all is done and healed to do that so that's why like fuck my instagram's been quiet lately and it's because i don't have i don't bust out a fucking sit portrait in one day you know because yeah. i don't i'm not really doing them i'm doing sleeves on I'm back pieces and stuff and, and yeah. it's not a good problem to have don't get me wrong like i'm not that no, absolutely yeah fuck, it's such an interesting thing to say though like because it, it's uh, we've like you're almost wondering uh, uh, w- like what audience are you playing to kind of thing you know do, do people Obviously, there's yeah, there's there's a whole tranche of people that just want to see what you're working on, and then there's yeah. people that will look at an unfinished tattoo and be like, "Oh, he can't even, you know, he must be super slow," mm. or you know, and obviously all of yeah. that sort of stuff will play on your mind. And then obviously there's a lot of tattooers out there that'll just be wanting to see how did you do that tiny little bit? Can you zoom in on that? But then yeah, you know, it's, um, I, I think my only my only issue with that is um, sometimes it can give people unrealistic expectations Absolutely, over yeah. what a tattoo should look like. Like, fuck, man, I put a filter on the light so that there's no shine on it, Yeah, right? So that I can you can see the fucking tattoo because, like, that was an issue. My whole career, I did these amazing, well, tattoos I thought were amazing. <laughs> take a photo of it. Take 100 photos of it, and they would look like dog shit. And, it, and the problem was is it wasn't a good representation of my work yeah so you know with um photography tools you can just take and i don't i don't edit my photos in the camera or in the phone or anything like that's how they look when they're taken but i put a filter on the thing to uh, what's it called a polarizing filter stops this shit yeah chinese you know that's all it does but then there was i mean i don't know how long you've been following tattooers on instagram but like i think maybe four or five years ago there was this arms race of the contrast slider. 
and it started real slow and then it got to the point where it was fucking ridiculous like the backgrounds went black yeah and the, and the, and you'd see the other league or something and just it would be flat pink like with no shading on and it's like oh we you know like mm, okay is that really accurate and and but the problem was is then it wasn't i didn't give a fuck like if they get clients and get followers through that more power to them i don't care but it was when my clients were like why don't my tattoos look like that can you not tattoo like that i'm like well (laughs) then you have to educate them about being an asshole you can't be like well yeah it's not really what that looks like yeah you know um but man, like the uh, but yeah, that was that was the only issue I've ever had with it is when that sort of stuff started happening. And now I find I actually find it really interesting that now a lot of tattoos are being done for that medium, you know. And it's kind of like I think it's quite amazing what people can do in one day. I think it's insane. I I don't want to put in sixteen nowadays anymore. Thank you very much. So and look, I'm not commenting on anybody's work here. This is just on on my own work. Right? Was always one of the biggest things I was taught was the tattoo's not done until it's here. And I, it's, it sucks that the only tattoos we sort of get to see now are fresh. They're yeah. all fresh, 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 fresh. And it's like fucking, that's why I, I still really enjoy going to tattoo shows. I still really yeah. like going and seeing the finished product and that's why i really like supporting and encouraging people that um that put these shows on to reward the back piece categories or the leg piece categories more than the table of the day ones but it's really interesting when you see people you know like we were talking about before who does a whole side piece of Karmoko in one fucking day and then it heals up exactly like it fucking looks like that and you're like wow you're a wizard what shit you know, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I've got there's there's a couple of real big ones that I'm getting close to finishing, but fuck me, like some of them, you know, they only come in once a month, and it might. That's be the thing, man. Like if someone can afford to come once a month, that's that's sensational in itself, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like that guy that I'm doing the bodysuit on, like he's taking a break from it because he needed to buy a car, which you know, fucking tattoos come last. Yeah. In people's lives, we have to remember that. Um, I think, but. Yeah, man, like he was in every three weeks, I think, maybe more often getting work. And I remember people talking to him at, um, at a convention, and they're like, fuck, what do you do for a job? And he's a baker. He works as a baker at Packham. So, so good. Like, how do you afford to? And it's like, that's all I spend my money on. He doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. Yeah, cool. And this shit gets fucking sick cats. <laughs> So good. So, yeah. so what's so what's um what's that. what's the next couple of years look like for you then? What are you um what what's your plans? Obviously, with the stuff that we're dealing with in the last couple of years has been pretty average. But obviously, being at home, having the yeah. studio where it is at the moment, it's, it's working out for for the both of you. What what like what are the next couple of years look like for you? I am looking at doing a couple more pieces that are just crazy, crazy shit. Just fucking out the gate crazy stuff like i i see what other people are doing and i get jealous of how fucking good they are and i'm like Fuck, i want to be like but you know i'm still i've still got that mentality that i had when i was a, a printer i'm looking at other people's work i'm looking at i'm looking at like ben k's work I'm, I'm looking at i'm looking at guys from overseas i'm looking at what matt matt jordan's up to you know stuff like that i'm like fucking do that stuff you know that yeah. how cool would that be but do my own stuff but basically that that's the drive now is to do this shit yeah tattoos, like As tattoos just, yeah. crazy crazy andy paintings there's back pieces or leg pieces or stuff right. you know like like uh the artist tofi like Tofi tattoo like his shit's just out the gate crazy just whole sides of just like piano keys yeah <laughs> it's, it's just crazy amazing amount of saturation just yeah yeah i was at the um yeah, that heals and you know getting to the point in your career that you can get clients that want that you know yeah. when when someone comes in and they go i want a sleeve and i'm like how about we do a giant exploding monkey head with like demon sperm coming out <laughs> the top and that's it and they go yes do like, it you know yeah i think with being out here and having that sort of extra time and freedom that we've got out here, I think I'm really pushing the, the painting, really 
trying to find that time to to do painting more than I have been in the past. And you know, with my five AM wake up and paint every fucking day, like hopefully it's gonna upskill me a bit. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, Plus, it's, I mean, it's your your family man now, you know. So you got to make time for that too. So it's pushing. Yeah, and that's part of being out here, you know, just so having good. that time, like. Like why not? Like we are all artists, and we 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 book in our clients to pay the bills, you know. Um, but we get to choose when we book those clients, and we choose when our shops open. If you've got a shop, yeah, you know, and and you can choose to um, try to make a lot of money, you know. And I made that choice um, years ago, or you can choose to live how you would want to live, and I think that's that's the ultimate goal is to live. You know, this is this is this is you get one shot at this shit, you know, and you can spend the whole time fucking sweating balls and worrying yes. about money and just trying to pump it out to make that cash to live better down the road. But yep. you know, you got to live day by day, you know, and that's why I still love this job. I love, I fucking love this shit, man. Like, it's this is the best. You know, if there's any other tattooists out there, like I'm sure they'll agree, and if they don't, they fucking should love this shit. This bananas that we can make money drawing crazy fucking shit on people. It's just what since when is that a job? Shocking you know, that. like that's it's crazy to think that we can have a career. You can become famous doing this shit. You can get on telly for crazy, drawing right? fucking like penis fish. Pretty much. I think it's fucking amazing, and I fucking love this shit, you know. And I love that oh, I love yeah. that people want to talk to me about it. It's, oh, mate, yeah. This and and I don't want to take too much more of your time, man. You you got a family get to get to, but that might actually be an, an epic way to end this conversation. Just hearing how good of a spot you're in, uh, obviously with family, the studio, the art, everything going well, man. Um, yeah. yeah, let's let's leave it there, man. Thank you. I I appreciate it so much taking the time, man. Sweet. Oh, cheers for um, the chat. Cool, man. Thank you. Hi, bro.